Hi there, today's lesson, A-level mechanics, we're going to be doing resolving vectors. So today's objective are to resolve resultant vectors into their constituents and to solve equilibrium examination questions. So what is the resolution of vectors? It is often convenient to split a single vector, a single resultant vector, into two perpendicular components. So let's consider this force F. And what I'm going to show you how to do is to split a force like this into its constituent vertical and horizontal component vectors. So the vertical component will be this one, and the horizontal component will be this one. So, calculate the vertical and horizontal components if F equals 4 newtons, and the angle is 35 degrees, so I'm just going to write 4 newtons in there. So what you actually do is something like this, you make a triangle. I'm just using dashed lines just to show that they are component vectors. This would be the vertical force, F V, and this would be the horizontal force. So to do that, you can actually just use trigonometry. So if you wish to have a, have a go at that, just pause the video and then continue. Okay, so first of all, I'll label it up. So hypotenuse, opposite, and adjacent. I'll do F V first, so the vertical force. So that would be opposite and hypotenuse, so that is sine of the angle, so sine 35 equals opposite over hypotenuse, so force vertical, divided by the hypotenuse of 4. So the vertical force is simply 4 times sine 35, which if you put into your calculator is 2.3 newtons. Then we can do the horizontal force, FH. So that's adjacent, and we've got the hypotenuse, so that would be cos of the angle, so cos 35 equals A, which is the horizontal force, divided by the hypotenuse, which is 4. So similar to last time, 4 times cos 35. If you pop that in your calculator, it'll give you the answer, which is 3.3 newtons. And that's it. So what I'm going to do is show you a slightly faster technique less work, which is obviously good in exams. So let's get rid of this. So I'm going to put the components in. So this time, that's four newtons again. So force vertical, which is the vertical one here, is simply, what, what, you, what you do, sorry, is the magnitude of the vector, so that would be four, and because it's opposite the angle that we're looking at, you just multiply by sine of that angle. So sine 35. Then for the horizontal one, we do the same, but slightly different. So we do the magnitude again, which is 4, and multiply it by cos of the angle. And then you can just simply put them into your calculator. And it's the same answer as last time, it's just a quicker method. So 4 times sine 35 is the 2.3 newtons that we got last time. And then 4 cos 35 is the 3.3 newtons. So that's the technique that I will use. If it's opposite the angle, we multiply by sine. If it's adjacent to the angle, we multiply by cosine. Let's continue then. So on this question, 25 degrees from the horizontal, let's say a force of 10 newtons. I'd like you to calculate the horizontal and vertical components. So pause the video, have a go please. Okay, that's done. So make the triangle. Force vertical is simply the magnitude of the vector, which is 10, multiplied by, and because the vertical component is opposite to the angle, it's sine 25. And the horizontal component is the magnitude multiplied by, and because it's adjacent to the angle, cos 25. Put both of those into your calculator, and that's it done. So the top one is 4.2 newtons. And the horizontal force is 9.1 newtons. All right, let's move on. Another example. So this example is the same technique. It just looks different and the angle's in a different position. So I need to give you a, a force. So let's say this is 20 newtons. And what I want you to do is to split that resultant vector into its 
horizontal and vertical components. So if you'd like to pause the video, have a go. Right then, so what I would do is make a triangle. The dashed lines are the component lines. So this is the vertical force and this is the horizontal force. So the vertical force, FV, is adjacent to the angle this time. So it's 20 times cos 25. The horizontal vector is opposite the angle this time. So that will be the magnitude multiplied by sine of the angle, which is 25. And if you put that in our calculator, you'll get the answers. So this one is 18.1 newtons. And this one is 8.5 newtons. And that's all we have to do. So that's pretty straightforward. Right, let's move on. Right, if you wish, have a go at this question, pause it, and when you want pause, I'll show you how to do it. Right, so figure one shows a ship being pulled along by cables attached to two tugs. The tension in each cable is 6,500 newtons, and the ship is moving at a constant speed of 1.5 meters per second. When theta is equal to 35, calculate the resultant force exerted on the ship by the cables. So what we need to do first of all is think, well, what is actually happening? This ship is moving in this direction. So it's pretty evident that these are the forces that we're interested in, the horizontal ones. The vertical ones, which you could calculate, would be 6,500 times sine of the angle, because it's opposite. So it would be 6,500 times sine 35 from tugboat A at the top. And also for tugboat B, it would be 6,500 times sine 35. However, these forces would be equal and opposite, so they would cancel out to give zero. Which makes sense because the ship is not moving up or down. It's moving in horizontally to the right. So there is no resultant vertical force anyway. Let me get rid of this. So what we're interested in is this horizontal force, which is, if we make a triangle or two triangles, is the horizontal force in each case. So to get that horizontal force, we need to, for tugboat A, we need to do the magnitude, 6,500, multiplied by cos of the angle, which is 35, equals, so I'll put that in your calculator, and we get 5,324, 5,324 newtons. And obviously that's tugboat A, but tugboat B is doing the exact same thing. So we need to times this value by 2. Which gives 10,648, 649, sorry, newtons. I wouldn't put that as an answer though, because that's the five significant figures. And the lowest amount of significant figures in the question are 2. So if you use standard form... which we can do in a very simple way by using the ENG button on your calculator, actually. This is a good opportunity for this. In most calculators, if you've got a Casio one, it will be above the number eight. And ENG stands for engineering. And what it does, it puts you into a engineering prefix. So kilo, mega, milli, micro, giga, etc. So if you press engineering for that answer, you'll actually get 10.6 times 10 to the three. So times 10 to the 3 is obviously a kilo. But that's still three significant figures. I'd probably put it to 2. So I would say 11 times 10 to the 3 newtons. Or times 10 to the 3 is kilo. We could write 11 kilonewtons. Either of those. When you press engineering, if you press it twice with that answer, it'll take you to 10,649. If you press it again... It'll give you 106.48976 times 10 to the minus 3. To, to go the other way, if you press shift engineer, shift engineer, shift engineer, it'll take you back. So you can end up with 0 0.01 times 10 to the 6. So engineering is the engineering button is quite a useful function of a scientific calculator. So please feel free to use it, get used to it. I'm sure you'll find it helpful. Right, let's move on. So... 
I just want to have a look at this question. I'm going to show this slide. So if you want to do a sketch, please do. Obviously, you can rewind. And I'm going to show you the questions. So if you wish to have an attempt at this, please do. And then I'll show you how to do the question. So the resultant horizontal force, intuitively, you've got... So straight away, I see this triangle. Hopefully you did as well. So this horizontal force, we could calculate it would be 15, which is the magnitude multiplied by its next to the angle, so it's cos of the angle. And the same on this side. However, you should have noticed that these tensions are pulling in complete opposite directions, these vertical forces. So whatever the value of 15 cos 20 is, you'll have 15 cos 20 minus 15 cos 20. So the resultant force horizontally is simply zero newtons. Okay. Then it wants to know the resultant vertical forces. And the vertical forces, there are two of them, and they are, but they're acting in the same direction. So we need to calculate them and then add them together. So the vertical force would be 15 times, it's opposite the angle, so it's sine 20. Put that in our calculator, and we get 5.13 newtons. Okay, and then we've got two of those, so just times that by two. To get 10.26 newtons, which we could write as 10.3, or even 10. If we're corresponding with these significant figures in the question, 2, we would write 10 newtons. So as a bonus question, can you figure out what the weight of the metal block is? Right, I'm going to give the answer now. The weight of the metal block must also be the 10.26 newtons. Simply because the two forces pulling up must be equal to the force that's pulling down. Because the system is in equilibrium. So when a system's in equilibrium, the, the forces that are moving up must equal the forces that are going down. And the force moving to the right must equal the forces moving to the left. So the two forces up are 10.26. The weight of the metal block must be equivalent. Right, let's move on. Right, I'm going to show this question, both slides. If you wish to have a go, just pause it at the relevant point. So that's the first one. And then that's the rest of the questions. And then in a second, I'm going to take you through the answers. So, this is quite a tricky question. There's quite a lot to it. So let's have a look. So first of all, I can see straight away a triangle. So I've got the vertical force or the vertical tension and I've got a horizontal force that's pulling to the right. So this force goes up and this force goes to the right. And in the position shown, the ball is in equilibrium. So what balances the force of the rope? So the force of the rope is pulling to the left. What is the name of this force that's pulling to the right that's opposing it? You cannot just say the tension in the cable. The tension in the cable is acting at some angle up here. What's opposing the, the rope is the horizontal component of the tension in the cable. So horizontal tension. What balances the weight of the ball? So the weight of the ball is going down. So the only thing that's balancing it is this one, the vertical component of the tension in the cable. So vertical. I've written vertical tension, but it's probably better off to write the vertical component of the tension in the cable, to be specific. When this question was done, this was not answered very well. People were putting the, you know, the tension in the cable stuff like that, which is kind of true because it's a component of the tension, but it's not precise enough for A-level physics. So the next question, determine the magnitude of the vertical component of the tension in the cable and the magnitude of the horizontal component of the tension in the cable. This is quite funny because that and that are basically the answers to the questions that we've just done. So let's go back. So vertical component and horizontal. 
So back to our triangle. So the horizontal one to the right must be equal to what's going to the left. So the horizontal component, so tension horizontal, must be 1,200 uh, 1, newtons. The vertical component of the tension, TV, well, you've got the weight that's acting down, so the vertical component must be equal to the weight. We've got to figure out the weight, and we can do it using the mass of the iron ball. So weight is equal to mg, so the mass is 250, multiplied by the gravitational field strength of 9.81 newtons per kilogram. So if you put that in your calculator, you get 2,452.5 newtons. Now, I'm not going to round that up yet, because... This is a intermediate calculation, and I want to use the full numbers for any subsequent calculations. So we can write the answers in. So the vertical is 1200. New one. And I'm going to make it, this is 2452.5. But maybe when I'm writing my answer, I might write 2450. But I'm going to use the full number for the next calculation. So the magnitude of the tension in the cable. So the tension is like this. And we've got both of the components. So if you think back to adding component vectors to make the resultant vector, we just need to do trigonometry. Sorry, not trigonometry, Pythagoras. So it's 1200 squared plus 2452.5 squared. And then square root. Put that into our calculator and we get 2730 newtons. If you press the engineering button in your calculator, you'll get 2.7 times 10 to the 3 newtons. So the last bit, the angle the cable makes to the vertical. So you just need to use trigonometry to figure out this angle, this angle theta. So I've got the 1200. And the 2452.5 is the vertical. So the angle, we've got the opposite and we've got the adjacent. So it's tan. Let's try and fit this in. Tan of the angle is equal to 1200 divided by 2452.5. So theta is equal to inverse tan of 1200 divided by 2452.5, which gives us an angle of 26 degrees. Right, I hope you found that lesson helpful. And if you want to do the practice again, just rewind and practice the questions, make sure everything's okay. And I'll speak to you soon. Thank you.